Hello everybody, good morning and today we are interviewing Roger Alexis aka Santana. This is a colleague, a filmmaker, a brother. He's very serious in this, in this business. I am slowly coming up and I want, I want his advice on how to bring in viewers, sub subscribers to YouTube. And that's why I'm here this morning. Roger, morning. Morning. And how are you this morning? All right. Tell me, how did it all begin? I would say it began back in 20, 204, 205. Okay. Right, when I really started filmmaking. Right, I love the art form. Um, there were three of us, three friends, me and two other guys. We started um, doing shorts on the weekend. Self taught? Yeah, self taught. Wow. So we're doing shorts on the weekend. Um, before that, just before that, I had a video camera home and I used to put sock puppets on my hand and just play the fool when I had nothing to do and nothing was on TV. So I used to, you know, do my thing and then. But tell me, mm -hmm. Santana. The idea of puppets, where did, that, where did that start from? I don't know, I just love Muppets, love puppets. I, 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 I saw the potential in them where you could be funny, yes, but the whole novelty of it, you could get away with saying things that humans can't, right? So back to the guys that I started with, we did shorts on the weekend. And then I thought, won't it be nice if we introduced puppets today? They weren't really into that, but they say, what the hell? So I bought this puppet. Um, it's the puppet I call Narain. That's my very first puppet. Okay. And we did a show called Herman Tales. Herman Tales was a show, um, was basically about this puppet that lives in a village, right? And he goes through adventures with some of the villagers, right? Now, we were self-taught then and you know little by little we you know we're learning stuff and going along and so on and later on santana came now the progression was i've been doing puppetry with the soft puppets as i told you right and there was this one time i did um a little show about a minute or two or three long it was funny and a friend of mine who i borrowed the the um, camcorder from he say um this real funny boy I want to borrow the video and show my girlfriend family I say all right he show it to them and come back he say boy they love this <laughs> right he said they love it make money I say mm. he say make money boy watch me I'll get twenty dollars I was like how much you, can, you started to get money for back then? Yeah, wow. you know, and it was just $20. $20 was nothing back then. But that was but money, that was money, man. No, not really. But the fact is, he wanted to pay, he, he saw the value in it, and he wanted to express it by offering me a little change. And it really, to me back then, it didn't cost nothing to do that video. So I did another video. And he paid the money, and he gone and carried it, and then I heard, I wouldn't see the video, he wouldn't give it back to me in, in, in weeks. That's because the video circulating. Neighbor learning neighbor and this and that and yeah. So when it does come back and he explains to me what's going on, he say, make some more now, boy, this thing will be big. I decided, how about if I take a course or two to do it properly? Okay. Right? I always love performing and filmmaking and so on. I could I creative. But how about I do it properly? Apply my creativity to some properly. Right? So, fast forward to Herman Tales, we're making, um, you know, we're doing it amateur, uh, taking the course, I know these shot sizes and so on. And we started entering it into film festivals. And next thing you know, it's showing on local TV. And I never looked back from them. 
I, I, I reached, um, I went to do the UE film program as well to sharpen my skills and open up my mind to this whole world of filmmaking. And yeah, the rest is history. What, Santana then. <laughs> How Santana came about? I already had my show and already was doing my thing. Then I had a class called. Um, I think it's cinematography or some one of them thing with lighting and so on, right? And we were told in September to take your time, learn whatever we teach you and apply to our final project in December, right? You can put some music on this while I tell you. Dun, dun. So, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Right? <laughs> so, December it was due. I was going to work I was making other films, I was doing everything else but doing the assignment. Hmm. So the Monday before it was due, in December, That's one of my classmates meet, came and he said, um, that thing due this week, you know, you finish it? I was like, what are you talking about? You forgot that? Yeah. He said, the short we're supposed to do for the, the assignment for class. I'm like, sure. I said, no. He said, well, hmm, it's due this Friday. I said, all right, all right, all right. Um, I go and borrow some equipment from school and let's go home by me because he was helping me, I was helping him. Okay. And we came here and we shot the very first Santana episode. I only used. What year? What year was that? What year? This year was 2009 or I think it was 2009, 2008, somewhere there. Okay. Right? We shot with very own um, thing. I just thought that stuff off the top of my head and did the puppetry. And I got it done. I only used puppets because I couldn't find actors in that short notice. Did it, edited it, sent it to them. Okay. I got a nice grade. <laughs> <laughs> At A, of course. Eh? At A. I don't remember. I didn't give me no C for all I had because, you know, <laughs> you know I, I, I think I got it. Okay. All right? And, yeah, that was it. I said, wow. And, I, and then... The same friend, a guy called Nick Atten, he was like, boy, this is real good. Put it on YouTube. I was like, Wait, where's YouTube? Uh, and I didn't see much value in YouTube because it was kind of now starting off. Right. And I didn't understand that, you know, streaming and all of that yet. But I said, okay, it's a nice place to store your work. So boom, I put it on YouTube. It sat on YouTube for months. I see I got 10 views, 20 views. I was like, wow, you know, somebody actually take time to watch my work, you know. After which, I kept with the filmmaking thing. I did um, a piece that the, 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 the UE sent to the film festival. I call it the Contemporary Sorcerer. It's a story about this guy who went to people with a video camera. People that are a man who they say is a over a man in the village. And I had powers and I ended up killing him in the end and all of that. That was good. That was awesome. I saw that one. I saw that one. You see, I was having fun with filmmaking. Right. Right? Back to the Santana show now. Um, a, a friend saw it and he said, hey, let's do some more. And another friend, Kevin Maturin and Nick, they were friends and we made another one. And then one or two other friends start coming in and we make another one, you know? And I just taken these videos and putting it on YouTube. YouTube. Put it on YouTube and it barely gained views. Nobody taking it on. Right? I was more and I didn't care. I was pushing my home on tails. Right. Yeah, um, next thing you know. One day I was a I was a news cameraman at that time. And life was good. What station was that? T V six. Okay. Yeah, I was a news cameraman for T V six. Exciting job. Um, life was good. I had a bachelor. I had my little place. The honeys was coming. <laughs> you call them honeys. <laughs> <laughs> I, had my, <laughs> I had my job, my good paying job, plus I do it my passion with this filmmaking. And, I, you know, the future was bright. And, you know, I just learned, you know, my psyche at the time. You know, things was good. And I would partake in a lot of projects, help people with their projects and so on. Then one day I was walking through the office and one of the technicians passed by and he said, um, Roger, I saw your stuff on YouTube or use a real beep. 
I say, w w I, get, I get a little defensive. What happened? What are you talking about? I didn't really know that he saw my YouTube stuff. And when he saw it, and when girlfriends see it, and when somebody see it, they started sharing. Mm -hmm. And I started to understand the whole concept of sharing online. Right? So I was at the, 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 um, the early stages of the social media craze. Right? So they started sharing the videos, sharing the videos, sharing the videos. And I was like, what going on here? So I went and checked it, check it online. And I see I had, I start, I had maybe about 20 videos. Then I see it went up to 108. Hmm. I was like, wow, 108 people watch my video. Then that 108 turned into 5,000. I was like, wow, 5,000. And I thought I'd reach with 5,000 views. But it didn't stop in. The 5,000 turned into 10, 15, but 20. But remember, views is different from subscriptions. No. Views. It's just when people watch it. Right. It didn't come from subscriptions yet. Oh, oh, it's oh. something I'll explain to you. Okay. I know I'm talking plenty, but I'll explain to you. Right. It got a lot of views. And a lot of people was watching it mm -hmm. and watching the whole video. Right. Pay attention to watching it and watching the whole video. Okay. Good. So, it went viral. And this is the first time I understand what viral meant. 50,000, 100,000, 125,000, and so on. So, I was like, wow. Then, I did the other video viral again. So, I say, you know what? Let me test this. We did a video, put it out, it viral again. So, I say, wow. So, not long after, everything that's happened fast, eh? Our agency start calling. Whoa! Yeah. Not to say they're paying big money, but they're calling. Yes. Right? You're, you're, you're being recognized out yes. there in public. Yeah. And bandwagon is... Over time, you know, it's like a negative word, but I understand why some companies will want to be bandwagoners, right? They wanted to pay me money to sell their products to their, my audience, to my audience. Right. And that's fine, man. Good. So our agency start calling, this one start calling, this one, you know, so everything was happening fast. And all you had to do is just keep working and supplying that. And over time, I created a nice team of dedicated individuals who wants to do voice, who wants to do um, camera, you know, things like that. And like, so I had a nice team and we pump it. All I had to do was write stories. Everybody know a Narai or a Santana, even in female form. Everybody know of somebody who like a pastor still, or even my drive. So, you know, on a cultural level, local level, they can relate to, you know, people like this. Even of the islands as well, regionally, the diaspora, and in some cases in the, 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 the international region, they, they can relate to some of these characters. I make them as human as I can make them. After all these years, you must be getting money for your work. How does it feel to, 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 to get paid for your work now? I feel um, thankful privilege um, especially with the pandemic uh, I cut down my production well I don't hire a cameraman anymore I don't work with the people I used to anymore I still get a lot of support from the voice actors and so on and from my boy Kevin Maturin he when he has time if I ask him to do a thumbnail some kind of artwork he's there but right now since COVID started I do mostly everything, production-wise, you know, so I would write the story, send it off to the voice actors, because of COVID, they would um, send me their voices via um, WhatsApp or whatever app they may use to give proper audio. I, until now, would um, edit the audio and then set, a day, set up my green screen if I need it and shoot. And I do puppetry for all the characters. So if you see a, car a scene where about five puppets in the scene, that's me doing it on the green screen and compositing it afterwards. Wow. It's a lot of work. Roger, hey. It's a lot of work. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it's from learning from these people over the years. Because I would advise anybody, you have a business, you have any kind of project, 
get people who able body and willing yes but it helps if these people better than you skill wise you know have a, a, a better cameraman you can learn some from him have a better vfx artist you can learn from them you know so over the years i learned from these guys and i, I know if i delegate anything to you i know what to expect because i understand what you do and when covid hit i had to do everything myself I get in better. Let me just say, I get in better. <laughs> As a right? one man show. <laughs> yes, I get in better. And I, I, I wouldn't like to say it's not easy, but I'm not complaining. Okay. It's hard. It's hard work. It's at times I'm not well. But I set a schedule in my head yes. and I'm working money. Yes. So I'm working for myself. Yes. So if I am home sick, or you are homesick, you will get up and go to work even when you don't want to. Because you're showing that discipline for the employer. Mm -hmm. It helps when you show it for yourself as well. Great. Right? I don't want to go out and shoot. I'm feeling too well. If you don't go out, if you don't make the money, you don't get the bills paid. And no only so, money. It's right. not only about money. It's about certain deadlines and showing the... the, 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 the um, well, yes, determination, but respect and discipline. For my craft so okay yes i'm feeling good today okay i ain't gonna work i'm not doing that tomorrow i'll have a hello high water i'm gonna get up and push and see if i get some shooting done tomorrow sometimes i would sit down for hours i shoot already and i'm not feeling well and i edit in for days people wouldn't know that it has some videos i could do probably in a few hours shoot it and edit it the same day it has something like that then it has others with more dynamic stories it will take you no know, weeks sometimes you get up in the morning what are you doing today you're going in the bush probably shagaramas to teach some shots because you know that does get on you might go lopino you might go somewhere to just get some outdoor shots that days i might just do compositing you know so i put in the work i put in the work and and, and next thing to anyhow we'll talk about that later but i just put in the work so if people find your stuff good or you're so successful, it then up move at night. It's right. work. Right. right? I work hard for you to like that. Okay. Alright. There was a time you invited me to come and be part of your part of, of your show. <laughs> you're laughing. I was Kizzy's dad and it was the sweat rice. That yeah. that you don't know what what you did what you did, did to, to me and for me. What it did to you? It, what it did for you? It made me a different person. I never knew my voice was known all over the place. People were saying, but Tayo, you were on YouTube. I said, but hey, hey, how do you know? But they said, you your voice. I said, okay. So thank you. Thank you for that. You, you, you made me famous overnight. <laughs> but tell me about that. That, that was so, that I, I felt so, I felt so. First of all, why did you think about me? Okay. Um, well, I'm at you. Yes. And you're the only Nigerian person. Who was, it was the accent? Yes, of course. Okay, it was the accent. You know, the, that's, that's unusual um, or, or, or some special about you. Okay. We all have special things or quirks about us. Right. You're the only Nigerian person I know. Okay. So if, if somebody else talking like that, I would just think it's time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like you, you the Coca-Cola of Nigerians in a sense. You know, uh, anytime we think um we we, we, we see a cola, you gotta think Coca-Cola. Right. It could be Pepsi or anything else. But right. anytime I hear a Nigerian voice, I think Thai. Okay, good. Right. I feel, um, I feel the shot that you were in, the video that you were in, your character was in. Um, I say let's do something cultural, because women talk about black magic and so on, yes. and there's something called sweat rice. You know what sweat rice is? Yes, man. <laughs> right. So Kizzy, the character Kizzy, sweat Santana food and give it to him to eat. Well, one, so she, he will fall in love with her for the rest of his life. Right. I say, won't it be cool? Because as Caribbean people, we connected. Eh? Uh -huh. Yes, you're from Nigeria. And I hear my ancestors... Um, from Trinidad, they came across the Middle Passage and so on. But some of our customs, yes, came across. But if not, 
it in our DNA. We have right. similarities in our DNA and it's not black alone. So when I look at the movies, I would see the little black, black magic, this any black magic. I want to be fool if you put a, a Nigerian in it. It would just make the soup nice. It would just make the story nice. And I say, boy, I hope he do it, you know, because if I put a training in it, it wouldn't be the same. True, you're right, you're right, you're right, right? right, you're right. And not only that, your voice is special. You have a special, unique voice. Yes, feel good. <laughs> right? So, I tried it. I said, let's see how it goes. I tried it and it, it It's went so there. long now. Any sequel? Any part two to that? I want to come back. <laughs> you could come back. You could come back. We can work on that. Okay, we can work okay, on that. Nice you know? Man, but nice. yeah, um, it was fun. I, I enjoyed the episode. You know? <laughs> it was good. It was good. It, it was, was good. good. Yeah. Nice man. Okay. Mm. Now tell me, what advice can you give upcoming YouTubers like myself? What advice I'll give our upcoming YouTuber? Um, find a niche, right? There are millions of people doing YouTube and around the world. You'll always get some, you'll always get millions of people better than you, and millions of people worse, and many of, millions of people in between. How do you get noticed? How do you get an audience, right? You have to have a niche. You have to have some special about your channel. Now, I don't think I'm special with regards to doing puppetry. Okay. There are many puppet channels on YouTube. I think I'm special one for Caribbean or, or Trini culture. You know, the dialect we use and so on and the, the situations. And two, I don't really have much competition in this niche locally. However, I don't rest on my laurels. Right? If I can, I'll push the AD envelope and do something that outside not doing. You know, or or do stories. Yeah, or do stories that um outside not doing. Just you know, I am a unique person and make my content unique. Okay. So always find a niche and try and be as original as possible. And be as universal as possible. Universal? Yeah. No, people would say I wouldn't be universal. My stuff not universal, but the story is universal. A lot of people just be, hey, look, um, Rowley say X, Y, and Z, or something happening in Trinidad. Do that, do that, do that. Sometimes, most of the times, I stay away from that. Because I am fully aware that the region is looking at my work. Okay. And if I do a story with Santana and some woman, people in St. Kitts, people in Barbados, people in the small islands, people in Fiji, if they watch it, they could understand it because right. it's a universal story. Right. They see themselves in there. Right. Yes. Rather than something, they, they don't know who's Rowley or right. even if they know, they don't care. So nothing political? Yeah, nothing too Trini-centric. Okay. Only. Okay. I already had the accent, okay, that is we stamp. Probably the locations, that's our stamp. Right. But try and do stories that other people could relate to. Okay, this is a story from Trinidad. And this happening in Trinidad. We do too much stuff with the political, this or whatever fad happening here. You know, I try and stay away from that. Okay. I get a lot of calls. Hey, do this now, do that now, you know. Be your own self. Anything you might want to add that I, I didn't mention? I plenty thing I want to add. Um, talk, man, talk, talk. <laughs> I, w I will honestly say it's not as popular locally as it used to be, but longevity is still here, right. right? Still doing my thing, and it's so flattering to know that I still have fans waiting on content, right? Around the region, around the world? Around the region. Okay. The analytics will tell you around the world, but if I have about uh, eight people watching in South Africa, it's not the same as a few thousand here, you know. But yes, around the world. Okay. Around the world. Some people think the, the, the western part of the world is around the world. Mm -mm. Around the world is around the world. Right? right. Norway, Trini is all over the place. Yes. Right? Um, <clears throat> what I was saying? Our fans around the world and are grateful for that. This thing will break. Um, should you 
get a popular YouTube channel, right? And fame and fortune should come your way. Try your best and stay as grounded as you can be. Because fame is a fleeting thing, right? You're only as good as your last video, right? And that's so true, right? And don't let it get to your head. And you know, I mean it any way that you, you will treat people differently. I mean it any way that you think it will last forever. Don't let it get to your head, right? Another thing too, it happens in every sphere of things. You, you, you're moving up, but things going well for you. You would get haters, and haters have the job to hate. Let them hate. Don't let it affect you. Right? Haters will hate you on the streets. Haters will hate you in the comments. Haters will just hate you. Don't let it get to you. Stay the course. Right? And anything you're getting into, make sure you love it. Make sure you really love it. And don't give it anything less than 100%. And 100% doesn't mean quit your job. And, and go and do it full time. It means the effort you put into it. Right? So, yeah, I only hear because of the hard work I put into it. And never forget your support base. I got a lot of support to reach here. Yes, I'm the face of it. Yes, I'm the man who makes certain decisions. Yes, it probably can't run without me. But I would not disregard the people who back a stand up on or shoulders a stand up on to reach here right and there were a few of them throughout the years and god bless me always be grateful right be grateful um other another thing is know yourself know yourself know your capabilities know if you need help to ask for help know if you don't need help try and do what you could do alone because throughout my, throughout my years doing this, you meet all kinds of people, the good and the bad, right? And uh, 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 what I get into is there are some people who will glad to do favors for you, who are glad to help you, right? And they want nothing in return. Then there are others who keep in score. Be careful of those people, right? If you don't need help with this, that and the other, do it by yourself. Because you don't know people are hard. They could be keeping score and they'll throw it back in your face. These are, it's something like little, it's something frivolous, but I'm telling you, these things are important. Right? Also, enjoy the day as it comes. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. it nothing lasts forever. So, you wake up this morning, you get to do what you love, enjoy that. And keep trying to improve. That's the next thing. Keep mm. trying to improve. Don't right. stay at one level. If people think I stay at one level, you're wrong. You ain't seeing what's going on in the background. Yes. I try to improve and I keep looking for opportunities because I'm blessed in so many ways, but my career is not where I want it to be. I'm being real with you, it's not where I want it to be. Right? I want to be international. I want to do this and do that and then in turn help people and so on and so forth. But Roger, how old are you now? I'm 46 now. 46? Yeah. And how's your health? It's it relatively good. <laughs> it's relatively good. I, I'm a little I, um, it's youth, okay. which sometimes comes with age, but to be honest, I've taken care of it myself. Okay. I, I exercise a lot. I try to eat right. right. And I put myself in a situation where I have little to no stress. Right? Little to no stress. And be among people who brings you little to no stress. <laughs> That's right? important. That's important. True. Right? And they're out there, you know? Okay. So, man, I could tell you a million things. It's just... And give back, too. Ah. That helps. Give back. Give back. And give back. Giving back doesn't mean... Hey, so, yeah. Look for $40. Mm -mm. Giving back means... Um, trying to... If they're interested... If they're interested, give back to the coming generation. But you can't do this forever. Mm. But knowledge you can impart. That's important. Right. Giving back is truly giving with your heart to people and organizations that in turn can help society. Mm. You understand? Whether you had the time, 
You could give back if you do all the time, it's all other ways you could think, you know. Be a useful citizen. Yeah? Roger, it was fantastic. Mm. I enjoyed this episode. Viewers, please view, like, subscribe to get more videos from local filmmakers here in Trinidad and Tobago. Roger! <laughs> <laughs> Santala!